in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. <laughs> Doubt and belief. Oh, I love this reading from John, not Matthew. Uh, it's a great story. And Thomas is a great character. And I think we all relate to him to some degree. What does it mean to believe? What does it mean? I may have told you these stories before. When I was a girl, my idea of belief was very much linked with Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. You know, it was that kind of Disney version of things in which you're told over and over again, you must believe. You must believe. Because if you don't believe, the magic won't happen. You know, the fairies will die if you don't believe. Or you won't get anything in your stocking, or the Easter Bunny will fail to show up. So I, I really worked hard at believing when I was a little kid. And, uh, and I remember the year that I really was beyond faith in colored eggs appearing from a rabbit and all that. <laughs> I remember the year that I'd stopped really believing, but I was still trying hard. And I remember laying there in bed at my uncle's house. We always went to spend the holidays with my aunt and uncle and their kids. And I had to go to bed first, of course, everybody else was older. And I'm laying there, and the light's still on in the hall. And I see the shadow of a six-foot rabbit go down the hall. I am not kidding you. I saw a six-foot rabbit go down the hall. And it was such a relief. Oh, good, I can believe again. A few years later, I had kind of transferred the same kind of believing to Jesus. And um, I had read the story about Peter, you know, failing to walk on the water and Jesus being so disappointed in him. And I really thought that, you know, this is something I should practice. So I got the, the bathtub full of water. <laughs> And I gave it a shot. I gave it several good tries, you know, each time really just kind of ratcheting up my belief, you know. Marcus Borg says uh, that belief is not about trying to believe three impossible things before breakfast. The Christian faith is not trying to believe three impossible things before breakfast. But that's the kind of simplistic mentality we have about the word believe and about the idea of having faith. That we just clench our teeth really hard against everything and all the information that tells us otherwise and plow ahead with some ridiculous behavior like trying to walk on water or make Santa come down the chimney or whatever. It's an unfortunate thing, and it almost makes me want to kind of scrap the Santa Claus business, you know, because it does confuse children. But what does it really mean to believe? What are we really saying? What is Jesus really saying to Thomas when he says, do not doubt, but believe? For surely that business of doubting has something to do with not Getting it, not trusting, not what? I'm thinking about belief this way. That it is, in John's Gospel, if you read it, the whole text of it, about a developing and evolving relationship with God. It is not thinking that something impossible happened. It is responding with faithfulness to God's invitation to deeper relationship whenever that invitation comes your way, which is every day. Every day. That invitation is coming to us all the time. And God is not asking us to walk on water, thank God, but every day God is asking us to say our prayers and to love our neighbor. And to respond with trust when it would be easier not to. It's the kind of belief that we do when we drive our cars. 
those of us who know nothing about transmissions and brakes. We believe in our cars, nevertheless, and we stick the key in and we go 60 miles, 70 miles down the road. It's a matter of, of putting our bodies and our trust in our relationship with God as that relationship offers itself to us. And this is what Jesus is talking about in the preceding chapters of John when he talks about abide in me and I will abide in you. And that the response to Jesus' presence is the giving of the Spirit and peace. And that when we respond with faithfulness, with the choice to follow Christ, with the choice to respond to Christ's invitation in this moment, the response from Jesus is that gift of spirit that allows us and strengthens us for what it is we are called to do. And that gives us the opportunity to have life in his name because in the end, we are being called into deeper and deeper life. That's what this invitation is about. It's not about screwing yourself up to believe something hard. It is about responding with love to the love given to you and growing into that love and becoming the whole person God is calling you to be. Thomas and John have this conversation because in John, the emphasis is on this deep living, ongoing relationship that John talks about as belief. But if you spend any time with the Gospel of Thomas, you will also know that Thomas, the Gospel, loves doubt. Loves doubt. Has a very positive relationship with doubt. The first step, in fact, to faith in Thomas is to be troubled. Is to be troubled. You have to, at first, not know something before you really know it. And all the good scientists will tell you that. That if you make up your mind about how something should turn out before you even test it, then you've already prejudiced, it, prejudiced your testing process, right? You cut off a whole range of possibilities that you might discover if you approach the subject with an open mind. Thomas says, be troubled. Don't just float through, through life without asking questions, without wondering why, without going to those emotions of pain and suffering and grief. Those are your doorways into deeper relationship with God if you will sit with them and Trust in God. They are not the enemies of faith. They are open doors. So we have a caricaturistic, a caricature, that's the word I want, a caricature of belief, which is the Santa Claus thing. And we have a caricature of doubt, which is the, I don't know what the opposite is. But there is a deeper sense of belief and there is a healthier sense of doubt that these texts are asking us to embrace. The doubt that allows us to say with humility, for instance, I don't know it everything. I haven't completed my journey in Christ. I don't have it all figured out. I can't fit God into my little pea brain. It may be that you know something I don't. It may be that you and I disagree, and you could be right. It could be that Christians can disagree. It could be that people of faith can disagree, and everybody doesn't have to go to hell except the one who gets it correct. <laughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs> I am so grateful I don't have to be right about everything, even though I think I am most of the time. <laughs> says, hold it lightly. Hold it lightly. Not because it doesn't matter. Not because it isn't precious. But because it isn't the whole picture. You cannot possibly have the whole picture. You can memorize the creed and spend years studying it and still not have God in your box. And the moment you think you have God in your box, you have closed off the relationship. You have actually exited the belief process that John is talking about. The belief process, which is about trust 
in a living relationship that allows you to keep growing and transcending your prejudices and your stuck points and my limitations. It's a journey of discovery. It's a journey of trust. It's a living relationship. And all of that, if we can relax with that and let ourselves go into our dark places when they come, let ourselves wallow in our doubt when it arises, instead of running from it and pushing it away, pretending it's not there, the worst thing I ever did in my spiritual life was to reject the questions. I can think of several times, actually, where I put myself into a real spiritual tailspin because I would not give myself permission to rail against the limited faith, the limited story that I had embraced as my belief. And when I was finally given permission to say, okay, look, you're mad at God, you really are. And explore that and be honest about it. And then all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, it took a long time. Then over time and faith, choosing to turn toward God, even though I was angry and confused, but admitting my anger and my confusion, over time, a new larger faith took the place of that smaller one that was not adequate to hold my pain. Doubt and belief, they belong together. They belong together in the Christian journey of walking into life in his name, into the fullness and maturity of life in the resurrection. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed.